All right, so this is going to be a Halo 3 easy tutorial, mainly focused for full game. Uh, first things, if you want to just copy my binds, here they are, but obviously do these the way you want. Oh, sorry, that's reach. <laughs> my bad. There you go. There are my Halo 3 binds. And just settings as well. If you wanna, if you wanna copy that, you can use whatever you want really. The only thing that really matters here is the frame rates, but I'm gonna get into that later. Also, before you start, start, I would uh, heavily recommend downloading the Halo 3 like checkpoint trainer and the checkpoint save manager. That'll allow you to make checkpoints and saves anywhere and. Uh, store them and save them for later so you can practice way more efficiently um, those links you can find in the halo runs discord uh, but yeah that's uh, pretty much it also when you play i would recommend playing competitive score it helps enough one or two places in the run if you don't want the clutter on the screen you can play on time or competitive time as well but competitive score is technically optimal then easy no skulls skulls will invalidate your own so. quick thing to mention whenever you reset on Sierra make sure to save and quit out of the level don't use restart mission uh, because that won't create a new theater file and since the method we use for timing this game is the sum of all the theater times you need to save and quit every time so the first thing you do when you start the area is walk to the right here these marines usually move out of the way like that sometimes they'll block you a little bit but it's random now the first sort of technique we get into straight away is slide jumping uh, you can jump off slopes, like if you have downward momentum and you jump off a slope, you can convert some of that downward momentum into forwards. Now the easiest way to show this is to just find a rock like this, or to practice it. Have a checkpoint, and just don't hold any, uh, any movement keys and just jump like this and see where you land. So if I just don't hold, if I don't crouch or anything, I just stand and jump when I land. That's where I land. If I hold crouch, I'll actually go a little farther. And the you can go even farther if you time, so you uncrouch as you land. Timing can be a little tricky, but there you go. You go quite a bit further. So this is the best way to practice the timing for this. Um, I'm not great at it on Cure the Mouse, so you'll have to excuse me failing it a bit here, but generally you want to uncrouch slightly before you jump and the way I think of it is as you land you uncrouch and your feet sort of clip into the rock and then you uncrouch and jump and you kind of boost you out with your legs acting like a spring. That's why I think of it. But So that's slide jumping. Uh, we're going to be using that all throughout the game and all throughout this level. There's not too much to say for most of this level as it's mo mainly movement. I would jump off that rock normally but the marines are blocking me. So I'm not going to say too much. Uh, here and there I'll point some things out, but generally you can just follow my my route. Here there's a little tricky slide jump you can do up here. So there's a soft ceiling. Uh, there you go, I sort of grazed against it and slowed down, you see. There's a soft ceiling here that you want to avoid. Make sure to jump as late as possible to avoid that when you do the slide jump.
For this first light, I just hold crouch. I just do a crouch light. So I don't get too much momentum, so I can land in the right spot for the next light. There's another soft ceiling here, which can be a little tricky to avoid. Uh, but it's all about the jump timing. You can just go around though, and it barely loses any time. You can walk up that rock right there. There's a little tricky slide here. I like to use this fern as a, as a guideline of where to jump. You want to land right in between that rock and the ground. There's a little slope right there. Saves quite a bit of time if you can get a perfect one. You can land right here and carry momentum all the way to this slide. Here's a jump uh, known as Moose Jump. Uh, essentially, we want to go up here and jump over there. So the way I like to do this is I first like to jump to this spot and then you can see there's a little incline here. On the left side of this you can stand. So the, you want to stand here and then crouch jump up top. The way I like to get up there or the way you get up there is by just walking up. I am, I'm not jumping or anything, I'm just walking up this little, because this, this slope you can't stand on, but just walking will push you far enough up. Once you're up, once you're up on the little ledge, jump, crouch jump to the right. And you should land up here. Now it's a bit of a blind jump here, as you're being blocked. Um, this can be a bit tricky to do with a checkpoint like this. But it should look something like that. Make sure to not uh, hit the cave wall, and uh, it's just it's just really a, a precise jump. It saves a couple seconds if you do it, uh, but it's not it's not uh, the most important thing when you're starting out. So if you don't want to do that, you can also go to this pipe over here and just crouch jump up here. When you do this jump, make sure to jump off this raised part. If you jump from down here, you won't have enough height. Jump off the off the raised part. Here I like to do a, just a crouch slide, so I don't go too far, and land on that rock. If you don't make it, or you don't want to jump off this rock, because it can be a bit tricky, you can also just crouch jump off this slope. You can hug that cave wall like that. It's a, uh, it's a little tricky. You can sort of walk on this on this uh, left side and then flick to the left like that, and you can hug the cave wall quite good, and it's it saves some time. Now here, there's a Cortana moment right here that we want to skip. The trigger is on the floor. There's two main ways to do this. You can jump on this rock. Oh, sorry, I haven't done this in a while. You can jump on this rock, jump on this rock, and then jump over here, and you've skipped it. Uh, this is a little slower than the other method, but it's generally a little easier to do. When you're doing this, make sure to not crouch at all, as crouching, um, so say if I crouch on this rock for example, it lowers your hitbox and it actually hits the trigger volume. So the faster way to do this is to jump from over here onto this rock. Be careful not to go too far down. Like you have to be on the top part of it here. If you're too far down, you hit the Cortana moon. So it can be a bit tricky to land in the right spot, but if you do it right, it's a bit faster. Here you can do a nade and slide jump at the same time. Get a big boost. Pick up the BR. We're gonna try to go for the Brute shot here. Brute was in a pretty good spot there, although he didn't drop it where I wanted. But 
quite nice if you can get that. Uh, if you do get the brute shot, don't like go back for it if you don't get it, it's not that important. If you do get it, you can do boosts off this wall like this. I jump off that. Just a crouch slide there. And just a crouch slide here as well, so you don't hit that branch. Going around this corner can be a little tricky. If you just hold forward, it'll be a bit awkward sometimes because you'll fall off this little ledge here instead of walking off it. I like to tap, uh, tap A a couple times to strafe and it tends to prevent that. Now here we have gap jump. We want to combine a nade and slide jump to make it over there to Johnson. Um, so you're gonna be slide jumping off this wall and combining it with a nade jump. It's possible to do with a slide jump like I did there, but uh, generally you're not going to make that very often. So the cue to jump that I use is this wall of vines right here. Generally around here is where you want to jump. And then you want to ride the wall like this. Don't like just don't just jump like this. I see a lot of people trying to do this, and it's you want to you want to like ride the wall, and then um, at the at the sort of peak of your jump, throw a nade against the wall. Throwing it against the wall will make sure it uh, lands in the right spot. And then when you land, you can do another crouch jump, crouch slide, or just a normal slide. Sorry. Now, sometimes Johnson will get blocked or uh, shot by enemies here, and he'll be a bit slow. He has to deload here, like that, before you hit this cutscene, or you'll soft lock. So keep that in mind. Sometimes you will reset to this, unfortunately, just because of Johnson being being bad. If you're using the checkpoint trainer and you disa have disabled natural uh, checkpoints like I had here, you have to re-enable them for the cutscene because of how cutscenes work in this game. So skip the cutscene, try to do a slide jump off the ex uh, edge of this cart. I'll try to show that again. Something like that. And then there's two diverging paths here. The faster method I'm gonna show first is to go over here, hit a trigger there. You want uh, right on this uh, grates here is there's a trigger. So turn around right here. Then walk over here, and we're gonna have to do a, a jump over uh, over this broken bridge. Now there's many ways to do this. Um, it's probably the easiest that you're gonna do, I would recommend doing most of the time, is slide jump and uh, brute shot boost. Like so. Uh, let me try to get plasma grenades. Or not. Oh, there we go, there's some. So the easiest way to do it probably is with a plasma grenade. You're not going to have plasma grenades every time. As you can see, I didn't have any there. But, uh, oops, sorry. Where is the... what? This is strange. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, the easiest way to do it, I'll just do it from over here, is probably just to do with a plasma grenade. Jump and throw the plasma, like, slightly later. This is really, really dumb, but... Trust me, it's easy. You just do it like that. Pref pretend that was a plasma grenade. One way that you can always do is with a frag grenade. Like that. Sorry. Like that. You need to bounce it off this uh, sloped part, otherwise it'll bounce into the air and it won't boost you in the right way. It'll just boost forward. Sometimes it'll work, but... You can also just make it with a slide jump, technically. 
like that. It's really difficult though, and I would recommend trying it. But this is this only saves a couple seconds, and it can be quite tricky. So if you don't want to do it, you can also jump up here. Uh, you can either jump up here, jump on top of this thing. Don't crouch when you jump on top of this. Just jump on the box, jump on this without crouching, and it should work. Uh, you can clear out some boots while you're making your way to the prison with either needler, plasma pistol, boot shot, whatever you have, and then jump through and break this. Also, if you don't want to do the jump, you can just walk through here, say it loses a second or so. Uh, break this window with a brute shot, you can break it with the bubble. Or if you just time your jump properly, just crouch jump, hold crouch, and you should just break it like that or so. But if you mess it up, you can always use a bubble or brute shot. Then it, so then free Johnson, and then it's time for down fight. So the first thing you want to do after coming through here is killing the chieftain. There's uh, many ways to do this. You can bait him out with an attack like that and then go for back smack. But the easiest is what I did uh, at first, so just melee him twice. Uh, you can ignore these enemies, they don't actually matter because they don't walk up to the dam over here. Only enemies that walk up to the dam matter. So we want to start clearing those out now. So start clearing enemies. This phantom is going to drop two waves. So hammer the first one. And then be a short wait and you can nade the other ones. Oh, sorry. I meant to throw a plasma grenade there. It's fine, I can show this again. When you hammer, you can save a tiny bit of time by uh, switching weapons twice. Unless you hammer a tiny bit faster. So there's uh, no enemies on the dam right now, so this is good. Oh my god. I need to switch nades. Oh wait. I can't switch nades. What's going on here? That's why. Okay. Well, that explains it. So after you clear the phantom, clean up any ones, uh, any remaining ones. And then these guys are walking up to the dam, so you should kill them. Doesn't really matter if you miss one. Ma try to make, uh, make your way over here without losing too much time. And then uh, we're gonna try to make it over the bridge again. It's a bit easier this time because we have a hammer. And I still can't do it. <laughs> but... Oh, this grunt is annoying. Yeah, sometimes he's stuck there. But... Normal way is just do a slide hammer boost. Like that. Again, you can throw nades. and stuff like that. And then it's time for early pelican. So the pelican should be arriving sometime soon here. Uh, now we're gonna be doing a nade and a, and a hammer boost to get up to the pelican early. Easiest way to do this is to um, use a frag, bounce it off this box, jump, hammer, get in the pelican. You can also do the plasma. It's a little trickier, because the plasma doesn't actually boost you as much. As you can see, I didn't make it there, because my timing was a little bit off. The most important thing when you're doing this boost is to make sure the hammer and... Uh, the hammer and nade are going off at the same time, and that'll give you the best boost. You also wanna... You want, you want the boost to go off like as soon after you jump as possible. And that'll give you the best boost. If you almost 
If you're almost not making it, what you can do to save yourself is to do a second swing like that. And that'll actually, when you do a second swing like that and hold E, it'll actually extend your reach. So you can reach a little bit further when you do that. This pelican is really drawing right now. Sorry, I need to, I need to enable uh, national checkpoints. See, so yeah, just hold E to get in the pelican. If you're, if you're almost not making it, you can swing again while holding E to to go to reach a bit further. I just follow this uh, pathing here. Just movement, not much interesting going on in the first, well, the first three minutes of this level, really. Can do a slide jump here. Just crouch slide. Here you can do a boost off these fusion claws. Make sure not to jump too uh, too early or too close to the fusion coils rather, as it can uh, can sort of boost you into the ceiling if you do it wrong. I like to jump on this line in the floor right here, and obviously the timing of your nade matters as well. Try not to get blocked here. And pick up the BR if you can. Now this is an auto scholar, but make sure you get down to the bottom floor here quite quickly after entering, or you will start losing time because you need to be down here for the for the waves to start. You don't need to be super fast, but as long as you don't really divert too much, you won't lose time. And again, this is just an auto scroller. It doesn't really matter how fast you clear these waves out. I like to conserve the R ammo, uh, so I have it for later. But it doesn't really matter. Get a plasma pistol. You can shoot this box on the left side to angle it a bit, and that'll help out later. In the level, and you see why. Uh, you can move this fusion coil over here while you're waiting for the next wave to make clearing it a little more consistent. There's a few different different ways to wait, do this. This is really the only part of this that matters. Just clear out the grunts, and then there's gonna be brutes, oh, sorry. brutes, and then one more wave. So that's how I like to do it. I time it, uh, so then after I shoot the brutes, oh sorry, this is really bad. So I shoot the brutes and then three more times and then reload, and then I aim at that part of the, fa the phantom and uh, and throw the grenade at a specific part of the reload animation. And that works mostly. Uh, it can be a little tricky to do with a frag. You can also do it with a plasma, and it's a lot of people like to do it this way. It's definitely easier. There you go. Uh, sometimes that'll ma uh, mean you won't have a plasma for later, but it doesn't really matter too much. If you have a frag, you can just pick up this one that always spawns here as you're leaving, and they can do a little boost on that fusion coil. Do some frag boosts here. Hold crouch for that one, not to bonk the ceiling. 
And then if you do a frag boost uh, right at this truck, so throw the frag like right at the wheel, uh, at the peak of your jump, it'll give you an extra boost because uh, the truck explodes. I actually got some more frags there because they happen to be dropped by some marines, so I can actually do some more boosts. Won't see those frags usually though. Now this is drone room. As you can see, there's five drones right here, right at the start. We want to kill all five with one grenade. If we do that, it'll skip some spawns. Uh, the way I like to do it is I jump at this line or right before it, and I aim at this, uh, at this, what do you call it, this beam, um, and then throw it sort of uh, when, once I'm falling. And that works really consistently for me. Of course, I'm failing it now, but you can see by the killtacular medal at the at the left that I got the five kill. Once you throw in that nade, start walking over here. You can shoot if you want at the drone spawning of, uh, out of the pipe. Like so. Sometimes you can get a, get a kill or two. And then start spawn killing them. And if you got that kill tacular at the start, then uh, it should be a really quick fight. Now you should have a DC at this point, by the way. I forgot to mention that, but you should have picked that up in the hangar. There are some drops there that you'll always be able to get. DC is deployable cover, by the way. It's this piece of equipment. Now right here, we want to overcharge this chieftain. Uh, the way I like to do it, sometimes he can dodge if you do it incorrectly. If you melee, uh, if you time the overcharge perfectly, then he should never dodge. So if you melee right at that line, and then overcharge, uh, overcharge right as you can, melee or melee just before the line, it should always, uh, he should never be able to dodge if you do that. So then pick up the hammer, try not to get his flare, and walk over here. Now here is the first DC launch of the run. Uh, we're gonna do a, let's call a sideways DC launch uh, in this Cortana moment down here. When you jump in a in a DC, you can, or if you throw it as you're jumping down, you can land inside of it. And once we're in that state, if we walk out, it can give us boosts like that. So that's what we're gonna do. Now this is like very muscle. This is just you kind of just have to look at what I do in the input viewer and try to copy it. Essentially, look straight into this wall. Hold crouch, jump, and uh, you have to do this quite fast, by the way, because you have invincibility in the Cortana moments, and you need that to not die. So jump. At the peak of your jump, uh, hold crouch for the whole thing. Jump. At the peak of your jump, throw the DC and start holding forward at the same time. And then once you get the launch, do a jump to conserve your momentum. And if you have the right angle, you should land perfectly every time. Like so. Uh, if you miss it, there is a backup you can do. This isn't really worth doing in my opinion. But you can nade... If you're just starting out, it's not really worth doing. I'll show you without the Cortana moment. You can nade the sort of on the right side of this grate. It'll go up against this wall. This is more of a legendary strat, but and then do a hammer boost on it. Or hammer launch. But this is all just muscle memory based and DC launch really. You'll be able to get it really consistently with a bit of practice. Now here we have another hammer launch like I just showed. Um, 
first thing you have to do is there's an invisible trigger here that's I think at about in line with this so you have to walk to the left and hit that before you go for uh, before you proceed now we're gonna do a uh, hammer launch off this grate when you swing a hammer the, the sort of it creates a, a, a force and it sort of uh, protrudes away from Chief's hitbox. So if we, if we hammer a prop like this, we can have that force come from behind the object. So that the, the object actually push it, pushes into us. And that's sort of uh, and sort of a quirk in the, in the physics engine makes that launch us way further than it should. Like so. Um, when you do hammer launches, you wanna swing, you wanna jump, you wanna walk at the object, jump and swing, and when you swing is, you wanna swing when your reticle goes above the top of the object, uh, in general. Probably the easiest way to do this launch is to go sort of at the middle of it, jump quite early, don't like make sure not to push into the object too much because it, then it'll uh, it'll change its angle and it'll launch you it'll launch you differently. So jump quite early if you want to do this sort of the easy way. And also you can't go too high because there's a death barrier. So. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Go on the left side, jump quite early, and uh, also hammer quite early. The fastest way to do it is be on the right side, push against the grate for a second, so you get a uh, lower launch and a better angle, and it can launch you straight into the bottom where you want to go. That's something you'll have to practice a bit to get the feel for it. Jump on top of here. Now we're gonna jump out of this elevator. A good cue for this... Um, well, I, it's not going to happen now because I put a checkpoint at the wrong time. Is you'll have you hear um, a marine saying uh, something about movement. When you hear movement, you can jump out, and that's a good cue for this. Or just as she's about to say movement. Throw a grenade. Uh, line it up with the left corner of this, and it should hit that fusion coil and hopefully kill some brutes. Once two brutes are dead, this wave up top will spawn. I got two brutes with the first grenade, so they spawn instantly. Once another four are dead, so once there are only two alive, this next wave will spawn, and there's four more here. So the, so the optimal way to do this, to kill those two brutes, get the wave spawning, kill these guys, that should spawn the next wave, shoot this fusion coil to damage the first guy, hammer them, clear out the wave, and the last guy is right there. Something you'll have to practice a lot, it goes different every time. Uh, not gonna bother uh, explaining too much more because I don't think there's a use to really. You can do a slide jump into this Cortana moment. Here is the first, uh, the first use of diagonal movement in Cortana moments in this game. If you hold diagonally, so W and E or W and Q, uh, or sorry, sorry, W and D or W and A, you actually walk faster in Cortana moments. 
if you're on controller, this only works on classic aiming if you're on controller. So keep that in mind. So whenever you're in a Cortana moment, it's a good idea to do that. Um, here we have another ham launch of a different kind of box, but the same thing holds true here. Hold the hold W into the box and swing as your reticle goes over top. If you do it right, you can redirect off that pipe really well. If not, you can do another truck bo truck boost off this truck along with the hammer swing. Push against this box before doing uh, the box launch. Now, this is the first uh, case of box launch where we really want to limit our power. So you can limit your power by swinging earlier. Um, so the way I think about this if, is if you swing as you're at the right time, your hammer uh, will start, the power will start coming out from here and which will swing the box around so it spins and it'll get the most uh, the maximum torque when it uh, smashes into you so by swinging earlier it'll get it'll spin less and therefore give you less power so i almost jump and swing at the right at the same time there just swing slightly after jumping and again push into the box to change its angle a little bit before you swing The same holds true for swinging late, by the way. You can swing late, and it'll it'll also give you less power. Although swinging early is a lot a lot easier to do. You can throw a nade and hammer boost to get through this Cortana mode better. You'll see uh, you see that ha doing that a lot. Um, it's a it's a really nice time save whenever you can do that in a sort of Cortana moment. You want to shoot here at the bottom, or s at some point after the bottom of these uh, this ramp, and I'll aggro these drones so they'll start moving earlier. And then we're gonna do a butterfly off of them, like so. This is kind of difficult to do on mouse and keyboard for me, but essentially you want to alternate reload and reload and uh, melee like so so what we're doing is we're mailing and then quickly cancelling it with the reload if you're too if you if you reload too late you won't be able to to, to cancel it so you have to do it really early you have to press f and then or you have to press melee and then reload very quickly afterwards otherwise uh, you won't be able to do it so it's sort of, don't think of it as alternating, think of it as FR or melee reload, melee reload, melee re reload, uh, like many times quickly. Don't think of it as alternating melee reload. And again, nade hammer boost through this Cortana moment as it starts. And here's the box lawn, the box we angled earlier in the hangar. Angle it towards the elevator. And that's gross.
So at the start of Salvo, we're just gonna walk to the button. You can get either of these hogs, they're the exact same. I like to get the third hog. The driving in this level uh, is very easy to lose time uh, without noticing it. If you really want to get good at the driving of this level, you you need to look at ILs at this level and really look study the driving path that people take and try to copy them. Uh, you want to minimize uh, fish tailing, so like when your when your back sort of wiggles around. Uh, want to maximize the amount of time you're spent uh, grounded. You don't want to you don't want to go over any bumps really. But it's not too important when you're starting out, but you will lose. You will be losing probably upwards of 10 seconds just from driving if you don't really know what you're doing but just copy the driving path at the start and if you wanna if you wanna improve at it you can do ILS at this level and it will help you save shave a few seconds off every run here I heavily recommend going for the left if you're starting out so go over here you want to slow down actually a little bit here, otherwise you can uh, hit the chopper and die there. So let off W just a little bit there to not die to the chopper. Get out here, grab this lift through the wall, and then get back in your warthog. Uh, if you don't want to grab the lift for some reason, stop. Get let this chopper get ahead. It's a good strat for uh, safety, and then go through there. Sorry. But yeah, not grabbing the left is more of a more of a difficult strategy that you can implement later on. It saves about ten seconds if you do it. Also a nice dropper. But it's quite minor and it's if you fail it it's it loses more uh, you can only Fail it once and you start losing time, really. So, don't recommend doing skipping the lift as you're starting out. So, once you get to these barricades, it's a good idea to go, uh, go through the gap here. Because if you go through them, they can often mess you up and flip you. If you grab the lift, stop at, there's a little line in the highway here, you, you want to stop at about that line, go to the lift, and lift over. If you're doing liftless, well, drive uh, straight at it, like that, and then flick to the right as you're going through the barricades. I like to line up, so when I do this jump, I put my reticle at the left side of the barricade there. That lines me up well, and then I just go through the middle and flick to the right. Would not recommend doing this if you're starting out. And then again, follow the driving path. There's not too much to say here. Sometimes that guy can screw you like screw you over like that. But thankfully, the, he didn't flip me there. This next part can be a bit tricky, so it's important how you drive here. I like to line myself up with this uh, this beam right here when I when I go off this uh, highway, and then you want to drive up this slope in a particular way. So you'll notice this rock right here. The best, the optimal way to do this is clip your left wheel right on the edge of this rock. And that'll give you the best, uh, the best height, pretty much. 
So go left, but only slightly clip your wheel on the on the rock. If you if you go too far left, it'll uh, it'll often bounce you off in a bad way. Like that. Then hope this rate doesn't shoot you. And continue driving to the end. Now the ending here, sometimes you get screwed by these brutes, uh, brute shotting you. There's not much you can do about it, you kind of just have to hope they don't. I like to get out at the shadow of this pelican. And then when I... Then I line up my first nade throw with the... At the peak of my jump, I line up my reticle with the top of the uh, shield door. Like so. And then you want the second nade to kill this shade turret with an, uh, one frag grenade. Bounce it off the bottom, bottom of it. Checkpoints. See an aether bind? Uh, one of them side moss buttons. So the start of this level, uh, the first minute is kind of an auto scroller. Just walk up to that button and follow this path. It doesn't really matter how fast you go here because we're waiting for a load anyway. That happens after a set amount of time. I like to kill this brute so he doesn't flare me like that at the wrong time. Go over here, you can throw this bubble to have the enemies not uh, not mess with you, and then after a certain amount of time you'll be able to hit that button. Drive over here. Now we need to kill a, uh, a certain amount of enemies here to proceed to the next area. Try to splatter uh, as many as you can. Generally if you splatter, if you splatter three or more, you're always fine. Get out of the ghost, shoot the marine, and uh, and throw a grenade. You can either use a frag, bounce it off the floor to kill the jackals, or you can try to stick the brutes. If you have confidence in your uh, aim and you have plasmas, I would recommend sticking the brutes. Afterwards, kill two ghosts and the wraith. Ghost died to one missile pod, and the wraith dies to three, assuming all of them hit. And if you killed enough, you should get that load. If you don't think, if you're unsure whether you killed enough, if you didn't splatter, uh, splatter a lot of enemies or, uh, on the way here, uh, or you missed your stick or something, you can try to kill three ghosts if you can see all of them. So in some cases you'll be able to see all three ghosts. So in that case you can miss all, all of them. If you're still not sure, you can go here and clean up the rest of the, the remaining grunts. Then ghost over here. Here you can hit this button through the through the ceiling. You have to look. Make sure you actually look at where it is, and you should be able to get it. Hit this next button. While we're waiting for the door to open, go grab a rocket from this box. Here, if you if you stop. Right where this Gratana moment happens, or like right here, wait for a second, and then go forward. This door opens like two seconds earlier for some reason. If I just went forward immediately, 
I would have to wait here for the door to open uh, extra. So stop here, wait a second, then once you see the door start opening, go. Now we're down here, we're gonna take out this AA Wraith. Three melees does it. Take your ghost over here. I like to line up on this spot right here on the ground. Right there. Watch out for the choppers here, sometimes they can come and splatter you. Line up uh, line up rocket shots with the right side of the phantom. So there's sort of a middle part and a side part. I line up my first rockets with the top right of the middle part of the phantom. And then I do the same with my second rockets. But I don't I don't move my reticle. So for the first two Shoot there, don't move your reticle. Second two, line up the same spot, don't move your reticle, shoot two. And it should always die. It's important to kill this phantom as early as possible. Because sometimes the turret grunts on the side, if you kill it really late, they'll survive the fall. And it'll count as the phantom being alive. And it'll delay the next wave. After you kill the phantom, get a mongoose, drive it up here. Make sure to park it uh, after, like at some point after this line, or a marine will sometimes uh, drive it away. So make sure it's parked after this this line. Uh, then you're gonna have to start cleaning up, most likely. Uh, this missile pod, this right missile pod, you're free to just detach and start cleaning up with. But don't want to detach the left missile pod. And then the next wave should be spawning. You can see by the phantom. Line up a rocket shot here with... I use the sort of black lines in the ground. And once the core of the... F cores of the phantoms, the glowy blue bits, go past this uh, anchor thingy. Shoot the rocket. And I should kill both ghosts. Once you shot that rocket, head over to this missile pod. Uh, and start shooting this phantom. The first thing you want to focus is the ghosts. Once uh, once the, ph the phantom is on the ground, start trying to focus the turret grunts. And once it's that point, you can detach. So it's important to focus the right parts of the phantom here. So again, start with the ghosts. Then... Try not to try not to get the turret like this. Try to get the try to aim on the left side of it, so you get one of the turret grunts instead. Otherwise, you'll miss all. So you'll often miss. Once you're at that point, you can detach and clean up any remaining ghost. Grab the. Assuming you got Johnson's dialogue, that means everything went well. Otherwise, there's something left alive. We need to get this mongoose through an invisible invisible barrier here. It won't the the barrier won't check for vehicles uh, if you're not in them. So just exit at the right time and it'll go through and you'll be able to take it in here. Line up the mongoose with this door. So go right up against it and then Pay attention to your front left wheel. Just, uh, once you're in the front left wheel is in the middle of the door like this. Uh, looks straight ahead like so. And start backing slowly. Once your front left wheel hits the door frame. Like that. Exit the mongoose. Foolproof way to do this clip. So again, put your front left wheel in the middle of the door. Stop backing that, backing up, except once your uh, wheel hits the door frame. Once you clip to the door, don't move forward until you hear the marine say, what's that sound? So line up about here, wait for him to say that, and then move forward. If you move too fo forward too early, you will soft lock, because the phantom, or the scarab won't have spawned in yet. So you need to deload the, uh, the scarab. 
And if it hasn't spawned in yet, it'll never spawn. You can start looking for a deployable cover here, if you want. For a trick coming up. It's a not the biggest time save, and I wouldn't recommend going it if you're starting for it if you're starting out. But I will show it off if I can get a DC. There you go. There we go. So at this corner, line up a, a sideways DC launch. We're not in a Cortana mode here, so the timing is a bit trickier than the one we did on Crow's Nest. You have to you have to line it up all yourself. And these boots are not being nice. Line up with the bo odd corner of the box. Try to land in the front of the DC. If I can do it. And walk out. And try to bounce off that truck. Otherwise, again, wouldn't recommend doing that just starting out, but there it is if you want to do it. Otherwise, just walk, do some nade boosts. Make sure to shoot those fusion coils so they don't kill you. Uh, pick up some, try to get some plasma pistols. Try to get dual plasma pistols here. Sometimes wep weapons like to deload in this section, so if you kill something and you can't find their weapon, it deloaded. Now we're gonna line up a shot on this uh, AA gun. I like to use the audio, audio, uh, sorry, sorry, the dialogue as a cue. Uh, once I hear Miranda say "ships," that's when I, when I uh, pull the trigger. So line up the top of your reticle. There's a little. You'll be, you'll start to be able to see it yourself. Uh, once you do this, but line up, line up like this, and you should be able to shoot, uh, hit it. I can't really explain it further than that. Just look at where I line up and shoot. Also, you ha you can't be too far away when you do this, because the plasma pistol overcharges have a set range, as to which they'll fizzle out. So after I hear ships, I shoot. I actually only hit one of them here, there. So they, they, they do uh, go at slightly different spots when you shoot them. So if only uh, if you hit it, but it doesn't die, it means only one of them hit. What the? I think yeah, I think I was too shooting too high. You can also pepper with the plasma pistol right there after you shoot, and it'll finish it off in the same cycle. If both of your uh, plasma overcharges doesn't hit, don't hit. Start this level. There's a slide jump here. There it is. Try to slide down the rock when you do that. And be careful not to fall off the edge on the following slide jump. If you jump at the right time here on these barricades, you can sometimes get a little boost off them. Pick up these spike grenades and throw a grenade uh, at this box. Like so. And it'll move it. Pick up that gravity hammer, and if you did it correctly, the box should get in a position like this, and you can do a hammer launch off of it. For these small boxes, you don't need to jump. So unlike the box launches we did on Crow's Nest, for these ones, just hold W and swing. Uh, your reticle placement matters a little bit for these, so in general, don't. Uh, you'll get less power if you look down a lot. So for these, 
try to look straight forward or even a little bit up is generally the best uh, the best way to do it another thing to keep in mind this this is a thing with all box launches is if you look to the right you won't get a launch but if you look to the left you will uh, it's a bit of a weird quirk with them but in general it's a good idea to to look slightly to the right whenever you're doing a box launch and that'll just make sure you get the maximum amount of power assuming that's what you want because even looking the slightest bit left will limit your power by a lot so looking forward is fine but sometimes when you look forward you'll actually be looking a little bit to the left and you won't get as much power so I always like to look a tiny bit to the right whenever I do a box launch Throw a spike grenade right here, where these lines meet, to angle this box, and then do a box launch off of it. With these boxes, with any boxes, another little quirk is when it when they're tilted upwards, it'll give you a lot more power. So it can be it's a bit hard to show off with these, but if they're if this tilts. Uh, too much, you might end up getting too much uh, power and splattering on that wall. So be very careful of that. Uh, here you can do a cone launch by uh, by bouncing the nade like that, so it lands behind the cone, and then jumping. The cone can hit you and boost you. Then there's a box launch here. There's two ways to do this. You can go off this box and bounce off uh, this box. The way I like to do it though is go off this box and then I go for quite a weak launch. I actually look down quite a bit here and hammer quite early after I walk into it, which limits my power a bit. Just like just like we did on the on the first big box launch, of, uh, great launch of crows. And then I crouch right after I do the launch to get over this card. Uh, pick up this DC through the through the ceiling if you're doing. They'll, we'll be doing a, a DC launch with that soon, which you may or may not end up doing. There's a Cortana moon on the floor here, just like on Sierra. Um. The way I like to do this is throw a spike grenade at the top of this box. After the spike goes off, make sure to shoot after the spike goes off. Shoot the box at the top, and it'll it'll uh, tumble just like that, and then crouch down here, and you should skip it every time. If you shoot uh, before or as the spike grenade goes off, sometimes uh, it won't work. like so and then you can do a jump up here it's a bit uh, precise but simply crouch jump up there and you can look up to help line it up and then you can skip this little maze section here walk down do a little box launch here try to limit your power there swing early to limit your power otherwise you can sometimes splatter um, after you do this box launch you want to start delaying checkpoint if you're gonna do the DC launch here and this will ensure you get a checkpoint uh, right before the launch. You can you can uh, delay checkpoints by mailing as it tricks the game into thinking you're in uh, combat, or jumping as well. Works. Once you skip the cutscene, uh, jump immediately immediately again to delay the checkpoint so you don't get it too early, and start lining up an angle. So I line up with this. Uh, the edge of the of the where uh, of the factory over there, and then I look down. Uh, I also like to jump a little bit backwards when I do this. I'm so this is the DC launch I was talking about. I'm not gonna explain this too much because there's a ton of separate videos on this uh, in the in the Discord that you can check out. But I'll show the method I use quickly. 
So I jump, I jump forward, throw the DC, tap to the right, right after I throw the DC, and then uh, tap W a couple times. And I don't crouch at all for it. If I can do it. There we go. And you'll often want to hammer uh, again, slow yourself down, or you can splatter. Uh, that's quite a difficult thing to do, and it will require a ton of practice to get that down somewhat consistently. So if you don't want to do it off the start, it doesn't lose too much time to just walk this section. Um, you can do a slight jump and boost off that rock. And as you can see, it doesn't take too much time to walk over here. It's probably a 20, 20 second time loss or so. Not doing that, so it's not a huge deal. Be careful of those things killing you though. Uh, there's a box launch you can do here. So these big boxes, you can't box launch off them. But if you uh, break them, they'll actually divide into small boxes. So the way I like to do this is crouch and hammer on it once, and that'll damage it. And then when you hammer it again, it'll uh, break and give you a box launch at the same time. So you might want to angle it slightly to avoid that little card there uh, after you uh, after you hammer it. And I think that's the easiest way to do it. But some people like to throw a spike grenade at it. Like so. VR the small box a couple times to angle it. And then do it like that. But that card can often block you like that. No matter which method you do. Hammer jump up here. Box launch there. Uh, there is another DC launcher there, but I'm not going to show it. You can check out the IL if you want to see that. Here we're going to do a box launch combined with an equipment jump. So certain equipment, including the trip mine, you can jump off midair. It's actually very easy to do. It's as simple as just throwing it and then jumping straight after. So try that a couple times, make sure you got it, and then you can do it in the middle of this box launch. So angle the box, like so. Do a box launch, and do a trip mine jump midair. Now you'll get a feel for this angle as you do it. Uh, after some practice, that'll be a quite an easy thing to get down. You really need to be able to to know your box, uh, your hammer launches, to be able to do that consistently, though. And I do have a separate tutorial for that in the link in the Discord that goes into a bit more depth. Here, it's a good idea to switch to 60 FPS here, um, because. When you enter Cortana moments in this game, the rate at which you de decelerate uh, once they start depends on frame rate. So the lower your frame rate is, the, the lowest being at 60 FPS, the, the slower you'll, dece you'll decelerate and it'll make boosting through Cortana moments a lot easier. The, the absolute speed at which you walk, like in the middle of Cortana mode, is the same on all frame rates, but it's just the start and the end of them. Are different. Uh, so switching to 60 FPS will make the end of this level a bit bit easier, as it's quite important to to boost through these through these Cortana moments and Great Mind moments uh, properly. So this is this is quite tricky, is boosting through this one optimally because there's just so much clutter in the way. But try to do some. Uh, some hammer boost there, let's see if I can show a decent one. I'm 
jumping a bit too far. Holding crouch here and spamming jump is a good idea as well. And if you do it right, you can get down. Or if you do it well, you can get down this hole before it ends. Holding crouch to sort of uh, make your hitbox as small as possible to get you through uh, the tight little gaps. Then jump up here. And there's another gray mine moment uh, right here. The end trigger for the level is hitting that button over there. So we want to get a slide jump all the, all the way there uh, if possible. So you can do this a few different ways. Most people like to use a slide jump off this, uh, this ledge and then hammer boost themselves to the button. You can also use a grenade. So time the grenade right and it should boost you. Sort of upwards like that and get you straight there. But many different ways to do it. Do this. Experiment with it, and then after I end, end this, I usually switch back to unlimited. So at the start of this level, hold E, or hold uh, whatever button is bound to exiting vehicles, and you'll actually exit that pelican way earlier. Jump up here. That jump can be a bit tricky. Just try to get the angle right and do a crouch jump. And get up there. Up over here. Try to get a slide jump off this rock. Uh, after you hit the slide jump, make sure to crouch immediately to not hit that other rock. Another way to do this is jump at the shadow there and jump on the side of that rock. A little easier way to do it. Kill this brute for his boot shot. You can throw a grenade here to get a boost. Those little uh, explosives right there will give you an extra boost. So that's why we do the nade boost right there. Uh, Try to kill stuff there, or try to kill at least the jackal, and you should get this checkpoint in the cave for this next trick. So we want to get up there uh, using a nade and a boot shot boost at the same time. The way I like to do this is I look at the shadow here of the box. And I line up with the left, with the left face of this box. So shadow, left face, and then I jump on top. I jump uh, right after I throw the nade, and then I uh, I jump on top. I turn around and I do the the brute shot boost. Angle can be quite precise because there isn't too much of this where you can actually stand on. So the angle is, uh, I think, the trickiest part of this. Could take some practice to get down, but it's not uh, not too bad. Many different ways you can bank the nade as well. Some people like to do that. Don't really know how to do it, but I know Sasquatch does it like that. Uh, if you don't want to do that, alternate way is to do it off this rock. Let's see if I can find the spot. So yeah, and that's a lot easier. Just make sure you're angled correctly, I suppose. Or if you don't want to do that, you can just come over here and jump up these rocks. Oh. Bit strange collision on these. And just follow this around. 
Here we're gonna start killing these marines. This will set up a trick uh, known as guard dealer later on. If we kill these marines now, they they won't kill these enemies, resulting in a, in a greater number of enemies alive. Uh, and possibly vehicles as well, because they won't take the mongooses. And we, it's important to have as many enemies alive as possible later on, uh, and that'll that'll cause uh, an overload, and the game won't spawn all the enemies later on. So, kill these marines. I like to snipe three of them like that, and then just boot shot melee the last guy. Boot shot melee should kill him in one sniper melee. Might not. And you can do a nade boot up boost there if you want. Grab these rockets. And start uh, driving the mongoose. It's quite important that you follow the route I, the route I do here. Um, having good driving here is really important. Because the, the enemies are going to start shooting you if you slow down at all. And you'll often flip and lose a ton of time because you won't go get to the ghost in time. So try to try to follow this riding line quite specifically. So go to the right there so, you're, uh, so the chopper can't hit you and then get this ghost. I should I should also mention actually if you do flip, and you're not able to make it to the ghost in time... So, in, for example, the chopper shoot me like that, and no, I can't make it. You can just keep driving, and there's another ghost over here that you have a, a second chance on. Drive down here. Uh, climb this, so there's a trigger here that we want to avoid, again for guardia load. This trigger spawns a bunch of enemies, so... And if we spawn them now, they'll just, uh, they'll just deload at the wrong time, and they won't be alive for, uh, the overload. So, if we skip that now and hit it later, it'll set up guardia load for us. So, what, uh, so boost up this rock. Watch how I, um, how I time my, uh, raising of the ghost nose. It's a vehicle function. I think it's a vehicle function too, if you don't know. I have it on to space. Raises the nose of the ghost. And it makes climbing up walls like this way easier. So go f quite far right to, again, avoid the trigger. And then drive over here. Set up a rocket shot with your sniper, and that should hit the the brute over there and the gun and the grunt. Set it up right there. Should give you a double kill. And it didn't, so I know something's alive right now. Shoot that. Turn around, start sniping these brutes. You want to kill three things. You want to kill three things right there. Um, try to either kill all three brutes or two brutes and the grunts. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't don't spend more than one uh, sniper mag though. Like don't don't start shooting four shots and then reload and start firing guns. So once you shot four, just keep going and remember how many you killed. So once you've done that. Uh, you can either rocket those ghosts, or you can try to snipe the, the grunts. If you're uh, sniping the, the grunts, has the um, has the advantage where you can ro uh, you can save your rockets and skip boarding one of the raids. So if I snipe both uh, go both ghosts, I could rocket one of the wraiths and then board the other one. Whereas if I rocket both, I'll have to board both the wraiths. So going quite far to the right here, I'm 
quite far left already, but going quite far to the right generally will make them turn around like that one, uh, like that, like the first ghost did. Allowing for easier snipes. And that brute shot brute is the one I missed with the rocket at first. So normally that guy wouldn't be alive. But once there's one enemy or less alive, so in this case it was one of the brutes that I left. There's three brutes over there, I killed two and then I killed the third gun. So since there was only one enemy alive, that ends the fight. Well, once the fight is over, you want to actually look at the sky here. And that'll cause the, the dawn to... Uh, or the frigate to come in earlier. So look at the sky. Once you hear that music start going, you know you, you know you you're good to go. It's a good idea to boost, sort of boost into this corner to avoid getting blown away by the by the wind here. Once you're back in the ghost, drive over here, line yourself up with this rock, and use the uh, the cue of the the music to know when to when to go. So you'll hear, you hear a couple like da da da. On the last one of those is when I, is when I go. It's not I can't hear it now because I reverted and that breaks the music. But I would line up and then once I hear that I would go. So the once you hit the the black bars uh, coming down from top and bottom of the screen, you know you're good. See the edge of that. So and there's some, something around there. So that's why we wait. Thanks, Chief. And now we come to the gaudy load. You have to be quite fast here to to since enemies can die in this section since they're fighting. So any sort of, sort of slow ghost movement here could screw up gaudy load. So try to try to drive quite well through here. It's also a good idea not to try to splatter any 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 enemies right there. I splatter a marine, which shouldn't really matter. Watch out for these ghosts. I would drive quite far left there to bait them out. And you can see on the on the top left that wraith doesn't have a driver in it, and that means I got the the perfect deload. Normally that would be a bunch of enemies here, and now the only ones that are here are these two ghosts. The worst case scenario, if you get unlucky, is if this wraith has uh, a driver in it. So you can see that when you enter the area. So make note if that driver has, if that wraith has a driver or not, and just continue up here. Take out this phantom. The Phantom dies in 4 fuel rods if you hit the weak spot. So these fins at the back along with the cores at the front are the weak spots. So try to hit that try to hit the fin at the back with your fuel rod. And then get the wraith. Take it out with the plasma. If the wraith had a driver, kill the kill the third brute if the, if it has one. And then uh, snipe these ghosts. Usually they're in this spot they're at right now. So usually they'll be oh, some invisible geometry there on the phantom. So usually they'll be right here and you can snipe them. The more enemies that are dead here, the faster the door will open. So you don't have to snipe the ghosts, but if you do, it will save you time. These ghosts over here, though, don't count toward the this fight, as they're, they're from the previous area. So once the ghosts are dead and you snipe the turret brute, if the wraith was still alive and it had one, just wait for the door to open. It's good to have... Uh, 
It's good to have at least one frag at this point. Because we'll be using that. This indoor driving can be a tri bit tricky. It might take some practice to get down. To get down cleanly. Hit that button. Continue driving. At this point, your driving is quite important. Uh, because at this point, we're kind of on a timer. Because we're going to be trying to board the scarab. So after you hit that load, pretty much, is when you're on a timer. Um... So try to, when you when you get through these doors, wait for the door to open and then go forward. If I try to just ram into the door, often it'll like tilt my chopper the opposite way and then I won't be able to get through. So wait, wait for the door to open and then go forward. And that'll help you driving a lot. Same with this door, wait for it to open and then go forward. And then follow this driving path. When you, f when you take your chopper down this hill, um, if I were to boost down here, I would actually die. So the reason I die there is because of the fall timer. If you fall fast enough in this game, the game will just kill you in the air. So make sure not to boost in the air here, or before you do the, the jump. You can also shoot like in the middle of the drop and that'll angle your chopper so you get a better landing. Do another boost. The driving ride is very important here. Boost, try to boost exactly where I boost. And that right there is the last boost you want to do. We want to, so the scarab's going to be dropping down right here. And we basically want to get to this point at the last, at the last possible time. Because if we get here too early, then this this wraith, if it's aggro to us, is gonna start shooting like this. And if it's hit if it hits us as we're trying to board the scarab, it'll totally mess you up. So we wanna get actually since it's on a timer anyway, the scarab scarab is on a timer. Um, we just wanna slow down here. You can grab get out, grab these spike grenades. Probably shouldn't go back for them though, like that. Um, to slow yourself down a bit, and that often de aggros the Wraith as well. Again, don't boost at this point, just go. And then line up this. So, I have a bit of a weird lineup for this. There's a very faint, you may be able to see it, there's a very faint line in the floor here uh, that I look for. It's sort of a two different piece pieces of like uh, the pattern in the ground here and I line up with that and then I use this uh, these lines in the floor to know where to be horizontally and then I look at, then you look at the radar so if you look at the radar you can see the dot of the scarab you see it stops for a second and then starts moving again you want to throw your nade right as it starts moving again and then do a few rod jump and you should get on top and that's my lineup for this I'll show a couple easier methods for this so you can go over to this uh, you can go over to these rocks there's two rocks right here line up at this one right as the dot goes over you just do a few rod jump And then you'll land on the bottom of it, and you'll have to walk up to the core. So that'll actually lose some time. If you do this though... Listen to the scarab legs, because the scarab is actually invincible for a second. Uh, so listen to the scarab legs uh, stomping on the ground, I l and after it stomps five times, that's the cue for when you can shoot. So, 
One, two, three, four, five. And then shoot it. Go back to your chopper. Oh, one more thing actually. If you're scared of the... F uh, sometimes this phantom will also follow you. And or, and if you're scared of the phantom or the wraith, you can actually bubble shield this jump. If you're scared of it. So if you're worried about that, try to get a bubble shield at some point in the level. And just bubble shield it. Go back in the chopper and actually wait for the scarab to explode. If we... After killing the scarab, if we go too close to this ramp right here, sort of anywhere in this area, if we go there too early, this pelican right up here and the load won't happen. So by by waiting a bit there, we actually hit that. We get that pelican spawn in early, and once you're on that that pelican spawn, you're on a timer again. If you don't get the pelican spawning. You need to instantly go up here and kill these jackals on the ramp. Uh, so I'll try to. Sh uh, actually, I'll do it this way. So if you, sometimes that'll tr that's a problem you might run into if you do this strat. Sorry, it's on the wrong rock there. So you might be a bit slow if you do it this way. And the scarab moves towards the ramp like it has now. So I might have, uh, I might have actually hit the, gone too close now. But I'll, I'll show this just in case. So say the pelican doesn't spawn in. As you can see, I haven't gotten the load now. If you looked in the top, uh, in the bottom left, to get the load, you need to drive up here. And kill these jackals. I think it's three of them. Uh, okay. It was just two apparently. And that'll get the load. And then we just need to wait up here. Uh, I like to get a carbine actually from these jackals while I wait. Make sure to get one. You can also restock on a few hard ammo from this guy. Other than that, it's just waiting. Uh, once this pelican is coming down, make sure to kill this uh, marine right here. The one right next to Arbiter. It's the male marine. And I'll skip some dialogue he has with Spark. And then just walk here. You can do a slide jump. Just do a crouch slide for this. Don't don't do a proper slide jump or you'll go too far. Do some nade boost. You don't really need your frags here. I. I like to keep one frag though, so if I have two frags, I do one aid boost. I like to keep one frag for the ending just in case. Hit this cutscene. Can do a slide jump, fewer boost there. Um, now this room is quite important. There's four camera brutes here uh, that that need to die. So the way I do this is quite specific. I jump here and shoot this brute as I'm falling. And typically if you do this first kill this way, the rest of the room, the rest of the brutes uh, will behave in very behavi uh, very predictable ways. So the second brute should be about here, kill him. The, the third brute should drop down, and then the last brute should be around here. 
So there's one brute that spawns in this corner, and he walks over here and usually drops down by the time you're here. Sometimes he he sits up there for longer though, so you can see him there. And there we go. That's all for him. It might might take some time before you can see them clearly in the camo. Uh, just take some getting used to. Him. After a while, you'll be able to see them quite easily, even when they're camoed. And oftentimes the chieftain will be slow here. Uh, if he is, if he's still here by the time you clear the room, it's a good idea to kill him. So he's here, so I'm backsmacked. So I backsmacked him. If you do kill the chieftain, however, that'll make the end fight a bit more difficult. So keep that in mind because. The way this fight is supposed to work is these brutes are supposed to wait for you to battle with the chieftain and then once you kill the chieftain they're, they start moving away. But since you already killed them they're gonna start moving a lot sooner. So if you run those two and start, uh, start killing the other ones with nades. Actually gonna few rod the third one as well. And if you kill the chieftain early, these uh, jackals should already be out. These jackals spawn as soon as the chieftain dies out of that uh, doorway. And once you get that load, it means you're good. If you don't get the load, it means you m probably means you missed one of the camo brutes, and he walks down here and counts towards the total for the fight. Again, you can hold E here to get out of the pelican slightly sooner. It's a very small time save for this level, but it's it's a little bit, so you may as well do it. Uh, now, the fight here is a bit complicated. The way it works is once once six uh, once six of the once six of the first enemies are dead. So any six enemies here. So say I kill six grunts. There's gonna be a wave down there if you see the brute that spawns. Um, so the, generally, what we want to do is kill five grunts. So one, two, three, four, five, and then you would melee the brutes, nade him. When you kill him this way, it gives you time to set up a laser shot and spawn, and you can spawn kill that second wave. So the brute dies as late as possible. The last wave don't have time, so the last wave doesn't have time to move out of the way of your laser. And you should be able to spawn kill. The chieftain is the most important one, and then you usually get a few of the grunts and a brute as well. Then you would spike grenade the two turrets. Make sure after you nade the brute to pick up these spike grenades. They always spawn there by the box. So spike grenade the turrets, charge up another laser on the wraith. And you might need to clean up some grunts here. And there should be usually a couple grunts and a brute there. And that should be it. So it's a quite, quite a difficult fight. You'll take some practice for sure to get down. Get the few rod after you have finished it. So you want to have laser and few rod, and then go over here to the warthog. Try not to hit these ghosts. They can be quite annoying sometimes and lose time, but try to avoid them. Drive over here 
and jump down here with the warthog. Sometimes you get weird landings like that. Wait a second for the promise to come out, and then just ram everything with the warthog. When you do this, try to have that not happen. So, what you actually don't want the warthog to land too close to the door, because anything that's too close to the, this door is not uh, is gonna deload once we go up this elevator, and we want to be able to get this warthog when we come back down. So try to have the the warthog not be too close. Usually, something like this is the is the area where you can be outside. So as long as it's like not right next to the door, you're fine. You wanna jump up like that. If the brute, brute shots your box away, which happens sometimes, you can come over here and do a jump up here instead. Jump on top of this thing with a few rod boost. And uh, get ready to do a jump up here. You can do a nade jump. The, the way you time this, if you look at the load in the bottom left, you'll see the text pops up and then it settles. Once it's settled, you can throw the nade and then start char charging the laser immediately. Laser, switch a few rod, and clean up. And that's the best way to do this. Uh, if you don't want to do, do the nade jump, you don't have to, but then uh, the faster you get up here, the less time the brutes have to move. So you can see they actually move this time. So it's actually more difficult if you don't do the nade jump because the brutes will move and start dodging you. So I, I do recommend doing the nade jump. It's not really that tricky. But it's important to do that as quickly as possible. And then we're just gonna be walking back. My warthog is here because it wasn't too close to the door, so it didn't deload. And I'm having some very bad driving right now. There we go. Pay attention to my driving path here. It can be quite tricky to do this uh, downhill driving without flipping sometimes. So try to copy my driving path if you can. This is the most important bit here is going to the t far right here. And it actually helps you take this corner a lot easier because the, sl the surface is slightly banked. Get out, get the Hornet. You can actually get that Marine out slightly earlier if you hold E as you... Or if you get out at the, at the right time. And just like I did in Cortana moments earlier, or just like I mentioned in Cortana moments earlier, going diagonally is also faster with the Hornet. So. Fly diagonally here. Again, this is the same thing. If you're on controller, you have to be on classic aiming for this to work. Get out here. Oh. Try to have two frag grenades here is quite important. There's a ton of frag drops there, so just make sure you have two going into this. Uh, the way I like to do this jump is once I go past the this part of the floor, I throw a spike grenade right there, in that part of the floor, and then I jump and do a, a hammer swing. If you do try to do a spike grenade jump right on top of a spike, it will kill you, so be careful of that. It's not really that t difficult to do, as long as you 
you're careful uh, with where and when you throw the spike grenade. But if you're scared of it, you can do it with a frag as well. And it's a lot easier. Just like that. And if you're scared of that, you can come over here and just do a regular uh, hammer boost up. It can be quite nice to try to clear out these drones here. Free do this fight. As they can kind of annoy you as you're trying to do it. I wouldn't recommend doing a frag jump up on this, just because you're usually going to be no shields and you want both of the frags for the fight. So start... I jump once the... once the second... or the third down. Third down beam here goes past, is when I jump. And then right as I jump I start charging my laser. Right after laser goes off, throw two frags off the slope here. And that should give you a very nice fight almost every time. So it's important to throw the frags immediately after your laser goes off. Don't like... Don't like wait oh, and throw the frags now. Sometimes the, uh, the boots will have time to move if you do that. And then just hammer the chieftain. There's a box launch you can do here. The box is a little bit uh, in a weird spot right now because the enemy has moved it, and you can see you saw there that it was it was bobbling back and forth, and because it was sloped upwards as I launched, it gave me a lot more power and it made me splatter. But you can do a box launch out of this. I wouldn't really recommend it because it can be quite easy to splatter even if it's not bobbling, and if it is in the regular spot, and it only saves a couple seconds, so. I wouldn't recommend doing it starting out. I'm gonna jump up here and do a slide jump up onto the Warthog. Just a crouch slide there, otherwise you'd go too far. Try to hug right as much as possible here, otherwise this prowler sometimes uh, blocks you. And then go quite far left here at the start, so you can take this turn. Uh, so you can take this turn well and keep your momentum. And that's really important for this uh, this next section. I'm having some understeer here, but try not to do that. Aim at this tree when you do this jump, assuming you have full speed. If you don't have full speed, aim a bit further right. If you got slowed down a bit, and you got boot shotted like that or something, just go to the right. You don't need to get that warthog off the edge, I just do that as a habit. Uh, diagonal fly, diagonal fly and start looking to here. Start shooting the scarab as it falls. And start missling it as well. The leg. And then start shooting the scarab. Once you get finish off that scarab, the other one should go down. Try to have your missiles hit the core. So the scarab dies quickly. The most important thing for doing this fight quickly is having your missiles hit the core in the back perfectly. If you want to really optimize this, try to figure out exactly where and when you need to shoot the missiles for them to hit right in the middle. 
Because if they miss a little bit, then it's not going to deal anywhere near as much damage. And it'll slow you down significantly. Once you're done, get your Warthog. If you knocked it off the cliff, take this one. Otherwise, just take the, mar the hog the Marines are driving. It's a good idea to kill some enemies here if there are any left. Because they might distract Arbiter and screw up this. Because you want to kill Arbiter. I time this 7... S I, I look at the timer when he lands. And he landed at 55 here. And I'm going to kill him 7 seconds after that. So roughly about 52. I'm going to kill him with a spike here. And that'll skip his dialogue with Spark. And then there's another little skip here with the Warthog. If you line up your reticle uh, right at the base of the bridge here, or right at the start of the bridge, and then time it quickly, uh, time it, time it, time the exit right. So the way I time this is I line up at the reticle with the start of the bridge, and then once my the wheels of my warthog go past this thing, like the edge, the bottom edge of the the building, I start holding E, and that was. Uh, Sort of moving too early there, so the door hadn't opened. And that should get you through consistently. So that's an easy way to time this. If you mess it up, so say you did it too late and the warthog is like slightly not through, you can ha hammer to get it through all the way. And this skips this Cortana moment here and just allows you to drive, which is obviously faster than walking. Skip this cutscene instantly. Be be careful not to skip it, uh, or be slow skipping it, or it, it'll 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 be unskippable for like 20 seconds. Just as a result of the Cortana moment overlapping with it. Now here we have set it a launch. So first thing you want to do is hammer that flood away or he's gonna mess up your box a lot of the time so hammer him away and then start looking at the box here so the way I line up this first melee is I go completely up into the corner like this and then I hammer and then I look at the black part of the box here and I melee once right there and that should angle it co uh, correctly Beware. then once it's angled you just need to do it like this so we're Remember what I mentioned earlier about uh, tilted boxes giving you more power. So we're actually using this right now because we're gonna do. So we're gonna do a box launch of this tilted box, and it's gonna give you a ton of power. Um, so try to sit in the middle of the box, crouch, and look at this these blue lines right here. One, two, three third gray line down line up the top of the box with that gray with the bottom of that gray line and try to have just a sliver of that blue showing once uh, once that aim about uh, aim about here it doesn't really matter too much where you aim contrary to popular belief um, so aim about here uh, turn on invincibility as well if you have it and then redirect yourself according to where you launch. It'll be different every time. It'll be slightly different every time. So you will need to learn to redirect yourself. Which is really where the skill of this box launch comes in, is the redirecting. So, here you can see these jetpack brutes aren't moving right now. That means I skipped the trigger. There's a trigger right around here. You see they're gonna jump off right there. Uh, you need to hit this trigger, otherwise you won't be able to hit the cutscene. So, getting launched too high will skip that trigger often. And if the enemies don't spawn at all, that also won't work. So that, so you see I landed quite, quite uh, early there, and which means I hit that trigger. There's a picture of exactly where the triggers are. 
uh, linked in the Discord if you want to see that. Because it been, can be quite hard to visualize. So there the enemies didn't spawn at all. So that also means I went too high. So this box is uh, launching me a bit high here. At this level, so I'm trying to adjust for that. Oh, sometimes this will this will happen as well, as you won't be able to stand on the box. If that happens, you'll just have to try to YOLO it a bit and time it. But do it correctly, and it should look like something like that. Either either laser the chief then, or just hammer him. So since this box was launching me quite high, I. I uh, adjusted my lineup, so oh, he's gonna okay. Didn't even just hammer him once, and he should die. Um, because the box was launched me a bit high, I went a bit further down on the box, which gave me a bit of a, of a lower launch. So generally, the higher you are on the box, the higher uh, the higher of a launch you'll get, the lower the lower you uh, launch you'll get. If you uh, uh, if you went on top over top this last building by the way, this this bottom won't work. Uh, but as as long as the jetpack brutes uh, started flying, the the cutscene trigger is still here. You, the bottom just won't work. So if that happens, you'll have to jump over the bridge, and the cutscene trigger will be over here. If you didn't go through that last little building part. Stick that brute, or stick that brute body, and it'll you'll be able to boost off a plasma grenade. Do some hammer boost down here. That's the MIB special. Box launch of this. Do it correctly, and it can look like this. Um, oftentimes, you won't go that far, though. So you may end up landing here a lot of the time, but you can carry it over the the building, as you saw there. If you get here, there's a third box launch, or there's a second box launch you can do here. This one's a bit tricky. You need to re-angle the box. The way I do this, as long as the box hasn't been moved at all by enemies in the previous in the previous section, I line up with the plasma pistol and then melee once on this line, and that angles it perfectly every time. As long as it hasn't been moved. Sometimes you do, you do get slightly different angles because it is quite precise though, so you will have to adjust for that. And then end the mission. Um, you don't really want to end with a Spartan laser in hand because that means you won't carry over your uh, nades and hammer to to Cortana. So grabbing another weapon so uh, will let you carry over. So basically anything that isn't a fuel rod or roof shot or a Spartan laser will let you carry over. So no, no heavy weapons basically. So try to try to keep that in mind if you want to carry over hammer which is a good idea if you have a lot of ammo left. Like I do here. Now this is another part of the game where I like to switch to 60 FPS. Just that, like the under floodgate, there's a l ton of uh, grave mine and cortana moments in this level. So being on a 60 FPS really helps out here.
the first uh, gray one moment is right here. If we can overlap this gray mine moments with the next one, which is right down that hole over there, it'll skip end up skipping the second one. Because when the first one ends, the second one ends, no matter how how far in it is. So throw a nade and do some hammer boosts. The biggest mistake I see people doing with hammer boosting through these these moments is they'll They'll boost, and then they'll land, and then they'll wait a second, and then they'll boost again. That's not really what you want to do. Uh, you want to jump as soon as you land, and sort of carry the momentum forward. So just spam jump, and hold crouch as well is a good idea, as it'll give you better. It'll carry your momentum better, and that'll make it very easy. So grabbing this, oh, if these enemies will leave me alone, grabbing this DC can be a good idea uh, because you can you can go for a little skip. That's more of an IL trick, but you may as well go for it even in full game. So you can go for a, a sideways, just like you did on crows. It's the same exact setup: crouch, jump throw, and I actually hit it perfectly there. And if you do it right, you can. You can overlap it with this uh, next one, and it saves like 20 seconds if you hit it. Um, but don't expect to hit that. Usually, you'll just uh, save some time launching right over here. But it is very nice time save if you manage to hit that. Again, using diagonal movement is quite important here to save yourself some time. Also, you can use some leftover hammer ammo here if you uh, if you have any. I kind of forgot I did, but because we're about to get another hammer uh, hammer anyway. So grab sword and hammer. Get down this hole. can do a hammer launch of this box. This can give you some pretty different results a lot of the time. Um, mostly depends on how you approach the box. So by by moving into the box uh, different ways, it'll slightly change the angle and launches you differently. But generally, try to jump immediately because you'll often bounce off this thing and then you'll jump and then you want to jump to to dodge everything and carry your momentum otherwise just keep moving forward don't activate this camo if you pick it up just just carry it pick up that DC you can use the sword to lunge toward the enemies that you're walking towards to save a little bit of time. Sometimes that guy will melee you and boost you like that. Time to clear these enemies just so they're out of your way. And I will walk through this. Start delaying a checkpoint by meleeing here. Once the moment ends, you can st stop the lane, just so you get it uh, as late as possible. And then this is uh, Hell Room. A uh, bunch of different ways to do this room. I'll show the fastest way first, that I, that I uh, usually do. Jump up here, and do a spike grenade jump up to the top level, and you're on. The other way a lot of people like to do it, uh, I don't... I'm not very good at this, but it's just to do a boot shot boost up there. You barely make it, and then you jump over here. Uh, if that's hard, if, or if both of those things are hard, you can, uh, you can jump up here. You can't just do that without, but you, uh, it's a bit easier to do with a boot shot boost. 
jump up here, go over here, and if the flood don't block you, you can just hammer boost up there. Like so. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, here, there's a few different ways to do this again. Cortana moment here. Fastest way to do it is to do two hammer boosts. Then do a sideways. Uh, and you'll land right here. You probably want to save this deployable cover though. For safety reasons uh, in full game. If you're starting out. So if you wanna, if you don't do that, just do hammer boosts and try to get as far as possible. I got really far there actually. That was good. And then uh, delay that. Once you're done doing, f I usually do four hammer boosts here. So one, two, three, then four. Once you do the fourth one, start mailing immediately to delay a checkpoint. And then stop mailing around here, and you should get it. And the reason we wanted that checkpoint is we're doing a big box launch here. <coughs> so you want to jump on top of this box and you can't really launch off it like this. You actually need to nade it. And then launch. And that's why you want the DC. Uh, for safety reasons. If you, if you get weird, weird angles like that, you can save yourself by jumping off of it in the air. So, quite important to throw the nade quite close to the box. I like to crouch for it as well. And then the main thing that matters is the timing of the swing. I don't usually do it just standing on the box, but... It's fine to land... Uh, get to the middle level as well. There's some alternate methods for this. One is to use this box. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Well, the easiest may way is probably just to do a box launch over here and then walk around all the way over there to the door. But you can also... Uh, angle this differently, do a box launch, and then DC jump if you need it. A bit slower because it takes some time setting up the box, but it's pretty easy to do. So that's an uh, alternative. And that's pretty much a perfect one. So here, it's quite important. There's a moment here. It's quite important to do this, to boost through this optimally. The way you do it. The way you want to do this is jump at the uh, jump at the end of this purple bit, start crouching, turn around and boost right as you start falling. So like right there. It also good it's also a good idea to look up a little bit. You don't want to look down like this. Try to look up a little bit into the ceiling. And just again hold crouch and. Jump immediately as you land, and you'll carry all the you'll carry momentum. Tricky bit can be getting around that pillar. Just mo once you get through this door, make sure to go around the pillar. Can be a bit tricky. But you can get all the way over here if you do really cleanly. Then if you melee and then swing your hammer, you can break There's that in two. In Another moment here. Made and hammer boost. Good way to get through it. If you picked up a DC uh, getting in here, right by the door, you can do a sideways here. And the door is. <laughs> the door happened to be open here, which is very rare. 
Uh, but that that is a thing that can happen if you do that sideways. Is the door can be open, and if it is, you'll just launch off the map and die. So it's a bit risky for that reason. At last I see. But it's just the standard, standard sideways lineup that we did earlier on, uh, on Crow's Nest and earlier on this level. So crouch and uh, jump and throw the DC at the same time, or hold forward and throw the DC at the same time. Here you can kind of cut this corner a bit by doing a brute shot and DC jump. So why not? Can be a bit scary though. Very small time save. Shoot these reactors with the brute shot. And refill ammo before you go, because you have some time to spare. Kill these guys, just so they're not in your way. Get this the get this DC. Get these boxes out of the way, because they can uh oh I didn't kill this thing. <laughs> well, that's awkward. So yeah, get these boxes out of the way before the reactor blows up, because um, they can they can fly around and actually splatter you if you don't. You heard it, Chief. You're not alone. We need to get to Halo. Destroy the flood once and for all. Can do a oh. can do a slide jump here, combined with uh, a nade. And if you ham have any hammer left, I would use a hammer boost there as well. It can be a bit scared to do this though. Because uh, those carriers can easily kill you. They do a lot of damage even on easy. So be very careful with them. I'm gonna make sure I have uh, some brutal ammo so I can show. Show the next area properly. So we're backtracking through the level where we went earlier now, and you may remember we jumped down this hole. Now the game wants you to go over here. Uh, you can actually jump back up that hole though, and it's a bit of a shortcut if you do. The, way, the easiest way to do this is to do a brute shot, and then DC jump. So just line up, I, li I just line up with this orange goo on the floor. And then I just brute shot and uh, DC jump. You can also do a spike grenade brute shot. Uh, it can be a little difficult and it saves very little time. So I wouldn't really recommend it for full game. But it's a thing. Uh, otherwise, if you miss that, you can just walk around and it loses like 7 seconds or something. Jump up here. You can just crouch jump up this thing from there. Uh, like this. Do slide jump here. Just crouch slide, otherwise you get too much power. Careful of these carriers. If I had boot shot ammo here, I would do a jump through there, but I don't. So. Uh, at this point, if you have if you have any boot shot ammo, at after this point, start emptying it right now. So start shooting and make sure you have no boot shot ammo left when you end the level, and that'll prevent you from carrying uh, carrying over. Because if we don't carry over, we get uh, full rockets at the start of uh, next mission. So, don't want to carry over. Empty brute shot. We'll make sure we don't carry over. Doesn't really matter what your second weapon is. As long as you have an empty brute shot, you'll never carry over. And you'll start with full rockets and AR. I would switch back to unlimited here. Doesn't really matter, but 
I just prefer to play on unlimited. And uh, accelerate a little faster out of cutscene, so technically it's a tiny bit faster. Here I would just do a regular standing slide actually, don't e I don't even crouch for that, and then I do a regular slide off there. <laughs> Usually gives you quite nice results. I like to nade this flood. You can just AR him, but he tends to uh, be like... They have very inconsistent health, so if you try to AR him, oftentimes he'll be like invincible and he won't drop his hammer in time. Um, once you get his hammer, you can do two, two nade hammer, uh, or sorry, two hammer boost there, along with slide jumps off here. And then we're gonna just jump up there. Easiest way to do this probably is just to jump up here and throw a nade, boost up there. But as you saw, there were flood there, so it. It's a bit slow, so the flood often have time to like jump up there and um, and block you, and it's also a bit slower, so you can do it this way as well if you uh, you're actually in the right spot. So bank it off the pillar and then do it like that. It's a bit tricky. Um, if you don't want to do either of the either of those things. You can come over to this pillar instead, and just, uh, oh wait, sorry, it's the next pillar, <laughs> I think. Is it? Oh, I got brute shotted. Ah, okay, that pillar works, but it's a bit tricky. So, I know these pillars, hammer boost, and hammer boost again up here. Yeah, this nade can bounce. Bounce is a little different because the surface is snow. So it can be a bit annoying sometimes the way the nade bounces, but try to bank it off the pillar. Then do four hammer boosts up here. And once you cross that ledge, um, we're on a timer basically for this fight to start. So walk up about here and line up a rocket shot. We want to kill Johnson. Because if Johnson dies at any point during this sequence, uh, it'll skip. Once the fight is over, it'll skip his dialogue and the door will open faster. Also, if you knock him off the cliff here, he'll spawn at a certain time later and has a chance of opening a door early for us. The way you line up this rocket shot to get him to fall off the cliff is you, you go up around, around here. Put your rocket reticle at the left side of this black line in the uh, in the rock, and wait for Johnson to get past this black line. So you wanna you want the rocket to hit him as he's still walking, and he should fall off the cliff. Sometimes, uh, randomly, Johnson will stop here and start la charging his laser. If he um, if he does, just shoot him as he's charging. He'll stand still while he's charging it. And don't bother trying to get him off the cliff. Because uh, it's not really... I don't think it, it's really viable to do without a setup. This is one part where competitive score helps. Because you can see where, uh, whether or not you killed him. By the negative score. You can see I, I knocked him off the cliff there as well. So this fight, um, there's not much, really much to say. It's kind of just do what I do. Um, try to kill Flood as they spawn. This is a very random sequence. Each Flood spawn uh, spawns at a random time. Between half a second and a second and a half after the next one. 
So ev literally every single pod spawn you can lose a second on. Um, there's two waves in total. That first wave... Uh, you want to start killing Flood and then after a certain point start focusing these spiders. And that'll spawn the next wave. I, got, I know I'm not explaining this really well but... Uh, I don't really understand it myself. So. <laughs> kind of just do, do this and uh, it usually works. Something I also realized I forgot to do now is uh, you would normally turn around before you rocket Johnson to rocket some of the flood. Uh. There you go, that's the loads, that's the fight finished. You would normally turn around uh, uh, before you rocket Johnson and rocket some of the flood that are on Arbiter. So Johnson spawned, he didn't really open the door early for us because he spawned quite late. but. He spawned there because I knocked him off the cliff. Uh, save two swings here. Make sure to uh, not use any swings here. Have at least two. And then uh, there's this trick here. This is something. another thing that I wouldn't recommend doing if you're new. Really. It's quite... It's quite tricky and it only saves 7 seconds or so, I think. The way I line it up, though, is I, as soon as I come out of the cutscene, I look at this uh, black triangle right here, I strafe and line up the, corner, uh, the edge of it with this blue line in the background. After I do that, I put my reticle like that and I walk forward. Look down uh, at, an, at, an, at an angle like this and wait for Spark to say his line. Once Spark says his line, you can do this jump. Uh, the reason this is difficult is auto turret jumps are very... a, ve a lot more um, tricky than DC jumps, flare jumps, or trip mine jumps. So they're... The, the angle is quite specific and the timing at which you throw it is quite specific. The timing I use is right as I start falling, and then I spam jump and do a hammer boost. Again, uh, not a big time save. Uh, actually, I will show what to do after it as well. And quite scary to do at the end of a run. But swap your hammer with Johnson again. Make sure it has. Make sure the hammer has one ammo left in it. Otherwise, you won't be able to swap it with Johnson. I line up in this corner. Wait for Spark to start moving. Charge up my laser and line up right there. If you don't want to do that, just wait for. Uh, just wait a second and again switch it once Johnson dies start charging you later I charged a bit early there because you don't want to charge it too early because spark is invincible I don't know if I mentioned that once you kill spark start juggling the hammer towards the door it should have refilled ammo now because uh, Johnson died with it. Now you want to uh, put it against this wall, uh, around this part of the door. When you juggle weapons, where they drop is based on where you're looking. So if I look up, it's gonna throw it above me. And this is really important to know for when you're doing this. So be, be at the right distance away from the wall. So something like this, aim at the right spot, I'm too close, and it should, you should be able to get a setup like that. Essentially you want the handle, or, uh, you want the handle to be somewhere inside this grey part, and it should usually work. I'm 
too close. There you go. That might work. It was a bit... Uh, it wasn't quite straight. But if we did it right, we can pick it up through the wall. Quite a decent time save if you can get that, because these hound boosts save a lot of time. Depending on how much uh, ham ammo you get, probably upwards of 10 seconds. At least if you go for the risky slides here. Speaking of the risky slides, you can do a slide jump off this uh, off the edge of that uh, cliff and do hammer boost down. Quite scary to do, especially if there's a sentinel in the way. But saves quite a bit of time if you get really good ones like that. And then just do more hand boost. You can pretty much use the ammo however you want here. Um, don't really need to save it for anything. If you have the invent still and you're left it by the door, use it to get through here quickly. Not be scared. If you don't have it, just walk to the left there if you're scared of the carriers. Make sure to kill those popcorn, they can easily kill you. Or make sure to shoot them. And then get in the Warthog with zero ammo. With zero hammer ammo. The Warthog drive doesn't have too much to talk about. I'm probably just gonna be quiet for most of it, like I did on Sierra and just mention uh, things whenever, whenever it's interesting. But in general, just follow, follow my driving path. There's a bit of a jump here. If you just hold forward, if you just hold W, often you'll have too much speed and you'll end up flipping when you land. So it's a good idea to uh, let off the gas a tiny bit before you jump and you'll get a clean landing. Just don't let up too much. Take up this, take this corner quite wide so you get an angle like this, and then flick to the uh, flick to the right here. Let's see if I can do it properly. Uh, something like that. I haven't done this in a bit, so. Bad bath. This, this gives you a consistent landing, if you do it right. Like that. You can, uh, you can keep your speed on the landing consistently, if you do it correctly, but it's quite difficult. Here, be careful not to clip your... Uh, your wheels on the side of the road when you do this jump. Make sure to go quite far right, just so you don't clip your wheels and uh, flip. Try not to hit carrier flood here. And slow down the corners. Go very far left here. To avoid the sentinels, because the sentinels will flip you. At least half the time if you try to go through the middle. At this point, it's quite important to uh, keep as much speed as possible, so that your driving is quite important here, if you're going for the uh, skip here. 
If you're going for sleepless third, drive at a path like this and line up line up your the right side of your warthog with the gap in the uh, gap in the panel. Make sure you come at the right angle. And you can barely make the jump make the jump if you have enough speed. You ne your driving needs to be almost flawless for this though. If you don't want to do that jump, you can also do it this way. Don't need quite as much speed for this. Uh, so if you notice you got shot by a sentinel or something, or you had a bad wobble and you lost some speed, don't go for the, the big one. If you if you're at this point and you realize you have too little speed, you can go around the pillar and usually these sentinels will boost you and you'll be able to get barely enough speed to save it and go for this one. Actually got too much there. <laughs> but those are the main ways of doing this. Take the left path here. And then go th cut through the middle. Here you want to go on the right side of this ramp, this is known as Ulzor's strand. The angle here can be quite important for doing this optimally. Because when you land you want to keep speed like that. So the angle and place where you go off the ramp is quite important if you want to keep your speed. I slow down a tiny bit here, going up this ramp, just so I can take this corner sharply. the end of the game. That's pretty much all there is. Make sure to skip this cutscene fast, because in a full game run the cutscene does count. You have to skip that immediately to not lose time. Uh, once you've finished a run, this is important. Even if you used auto splitter on PC, you should go to your theater films, and there there should be time the theater films for all your levels here. If you do the full game run, Con uh, check the time, the length here at the bottom, and make sure it's accurate with the auto splitter because it does mess up sometimes. It's not completely accurate, and if you don't show this, or you have to show this. Uh, for your run to be completely valid. So yeah, the the auto splitter is quite often off by one second, and in one, on one of the levels. So make sure to check that. But that's pretty much it. I uh, hopefully this was somewhat helpful. <laughs> um, thanks for uh, watching, and I hope you uh, I hope you continue running this game.